Hello and welcome to our review for The Blood of Sanctum, which was the season finale of season 6 of The 100. I thought it was a pretty good episode. I thought there were parts that were a little bit weird. The end of the episode I thought was was kind of a little bit um, jarring in that it jumped from one location to the anomaly pretty quickly with the same characters they were talking in one location and then all those characters were immediately kind of like over um in a different location and it felt like they had to cut a scene just for time which is okay but there were i think a couple little things throughout the episode which i wasn't a massive fan of um like the fact that all the scientists all the primes wanted to go to uninhabitable planets to see if they could live there which seemed like a really strange plan for them to to pursue but i kind of understand that they were desperate and just looking for something other than what was immediately in front of them they're kind of sick and tired of the anomaly but i think the good parts of the episode really um they 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 make it so it's like a pretty good episode. I, I'm I'm trying to think of the word for it. My brain's kind of dying. It's kind of they uh, make, they make up for the weirdness. Yeah, they they definitely yeah. make up for the 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 worst parts of the episode. I think that it was overall a very fun episode. I enjoyed the stuff at the end with Octavia and her tattoo. I thought that that was cool, and it leads towards. A pretty interesting setup for the next season. They could go a couple different directions, but it seems like Hope has had quite a bit of time to to grow up. You know, she was how old do you think? Like twenty? Yeah, probably. Something like that. So there's been some kind of time jump in with the anomaly. Dioza has, I don't know, been there for a while or. Time just operates very, very differently. Maybe she's been jumping around to a couple different times with with Hope, but um, Hope was never born. Like Diozo was still pregnant with her when she went missing in the anomaly. So I'm I'm really interested to see how they they plan to explain that. And you know, given what we we were talking about right before this. Um, what they're going to do with the fact that they only have one more season. It seems like they've just opened up this whole new world that they could explore. And I don't know how much of that they're going to get to, how that's going to fit into the books that they, that um, I believe the writer's working on and has plans for continuing. I don't know what her plans are, uh, but I enjoy this universe. I, I'm, I'm pretty bummed like hearing the fact that we only have one more season but i trust the creators i think they know what they're doing do you think they might do a spin-off or something i mean it's possible i guess they could you know go back and check in on sanctum or yeah go do like a life before the 100 showed up on the pl the uh, moon or whatever. I don't really think so, though. I feel like a lot of the actors are a little bit tired of their roles. <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. They could play around with the anomaly just to like, keep us in the same universe, but give us new actors to, to play around with, to tell stories with. Mm-hmm. Eh. I, I wouldn't be that interested in watching an, a spinoff. <laughs> Yeah. I feel like they're never as good. So. Yeah. Most of the time it's just kind of like... Yeah. They're just trying to, to get you there for nostalgia's sake. Not really for the... The stories that they're trying to tell. Mm -hmm. But there was some really cool stuff throughout this episode. Like with Simone... Um, and her wanting to kill like the sleeping army right away that seemed like a pretty logical thing for her to want to 
to do, but also like all very true to her character and, and something that I think that made sense for her to suggest and not for, you know, Russell to be like, hey, let's go do this. So it's it's cool to see her kind of like come back and be her ruthless self, even though she was just introduced as a pretty peaceful doctor. I thought, you know, she grew into her own her own evil role, kind of like how Josephine didn't really start off as a very evil person, but she became that person over over the generations. Yeah. And um, that scene. That where where she was sent out the airlock. I thought that was it was neat that they called back to how um, Abby got Clark's dad sent out the airlock all those years ago, all those seasons ago, um, and it was really highlighted by Clark asking Simone, like, "What was my father's name?" when she was pretending to be Abby. Um, I'm pretty sure that was everything there in that scene. I don't know if I missed anything else there, but they they definitely seem to be um, calling back to a lot of interesting stuff that they've done in in previous seasons while also planting their own seeds for the future. I just briefly looked up like the that numbers thing that was on the what was it called? Anomaly stone. I think they called it the anomaly stone, right? Mm Mm-hmm. And it sounds like, you know, a pretty complicated form of algebra that I may have seen a long time ago when I was in college, but it seems like something I'm not familiar with, something that um, just went in one ear and out the other or or something that I never came across. And I, I wish I... I understood it because I want I want to understand how that could apply to this universe. Something tells me it may just be one of those words that they kind of like. That's a cool concept. Let's try to work this into our show, but they actually have no idea how it works in in the real world. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, if they just made it seem convenient with the whole like, it sounds like Octavia, blah blah blah, like. Yeah, I would err on the side of, like, they don't really know what's happening with it. Mm -hmm. Mathematically. Yeah, because it sounds like it has to do with eight numbers or something like that, rather than Octavia being, like, that, that old, I think, Roman name with some historical importance, like, and which is what they've really, I think, tied her character more closely to, rather than the number eight or things like that. So, yeah, it just it seems very convenient more than anything else. Yeah. Yeah, I do like that somehow Russell made it through this season. I think he's a He's a pretty good character, even though he did some horrible things. I think he regretted it, and yeah, the actor did a really good job with the character. I think that they should be able to do some interesting stuff with him next season, but at the same time, it's like I don't really want it to be too crowded if I only know there's going to be so many episodes, and they have such a full cast already with characters like Raven and Jackson and Miller. And Gaia, who always seemed to just get sidelined all the time. I thought this was a pretty good episode for Gaia, but it does seem like they do that more more than I'd like. They just run out of time for their characters, which is probably kind of why it had such a, a weird end to this episode. Mm-hmm. But yeah, no, Murphy Murphy had some fun fun lines. I thought he had a a good cu- couple one liners this this episode I particularly liked when he said to Gabriel if I die you're gonna bring me back <laughs> cause it's just like yeah we all know Gabriel wouldn't but he just had to say it like that not even like a question like you're gonna do this 
I also thought it was cool that Gaia was willing to save Maddie if that meant killing the flame, e even though she's like a flame keeper, and that's like been really important to their society for hundreds of years at this point. I, when they were going through that whole decision process, I kept like thinking if I was the flame keeper, I may not be able to do that. Like this is her religion. This is what she's been brought up to believe. But it sounds like her connection to Maddie, the, the child, was pretty strong. Probably stronger than how flame keepers bonded with previous commanders. Like Gaia had been deeply influenced by the Earthlings and the way they kind of view the whole, I guess, rule of children. Because when we first met the Grounders, they had the seconds on, on the the horses going into battle, they treated the kids like adults, but the earthlings still had that kind of more modern view on, on how to treat children. Mm -hmm. So I guess maybe that's why she decided to, you know, not do what was better for the society, but rather what was better for that individual in that moment. Because that's kind of like why the commander was such a a useful thing is like they were willing to almost do like what people were willing to do with the primes like anything give their lives so that that knowledge could be passed down and they had kids compete to the death compete um, to the death to see who could be the next one so it's it wasn't like it was a completely harmless process they definitely had some a lot of blood on their hands. I think we're going to see some more of um, Shade Hada in the next season. They showed quickly at the end of the of the episode when they're trying to delete him that once they downloaded him I think onto the ship that he got uploaded somewhere else I think it was on the ship mm -hmm. but it, who knows it could have been off planet but I, I don't wonder know where else he he'd go will download Shane Hayda into his head thing who? and become Russell Russell or Jordan because Jordan had a mind drive at the end right? yeah Jordan's been converted. It does seem like they they set him up to to have that kind of struggle in the next season. Who knows if he'll he'll stay that way for very long? But um, maybe I'll just be like the catalyst to the next conflict. Something tells me they may kill off Jordan. I don't know. He didn't have a whole lot to do this season. I I feel like he hasn't done anything for four or five episodes and then all of a sudden he's like, oh yeah, not no longer stabbed and now drinking the blood of people, I guess. The people who weren't religious, they drained for blood to give the toxin to the, I don't know, people they were testing. It was, I, I wasn't very clear on that whole process, but it did seem very religious. Like the whole, I think you said it's kind of like the whole Catholic ritual with the, like, was it the blood of Christ? The wine is supposed to be something like that? Mm hmm. Yeah. And then the bread or crack or whatever is supposed to be his body. I mean, yeah, it's like basically just like that. A little more culty, but, you know. <laughs> yeah it would be interesting if Jordan just goes like straight cult status and like becomes a god for them because I mean his backstory is his parents raised him to believe that all of their friends were such great amazing people right mm -hmm. then they all wake up and they're horrible in his mind because yeah. he's built them up to be these like legends. It's like basically exactly what happened to the people on the planet. 
So I'm not so that surprised that he's siding with them, you know, that he's yeah. hanging around and yeah. Well, he doesn't have like the the night blood himself and like almost all of the main characters have night blood, so he's going to like try and use one of them, I think, to resurrect Priya slash what he believes now to be Delilah, even though he knows better. I think that's going to be where they take that next season. Um, mm -hmm. But he's only going to have that one mind drive unless they find a way to go to space and find all those bodies of the people that got sent out into space, which I guess is possible, but unlikely. Mm, I don't know. So, uh, yeah. Given that they only got the one, I don't know how they're how he'd be able to like, do, you know, cause more than one problem, which makes me feel like they may just kill him off. They may just like find a way to get rid of him, get rid of a couple other people, send down the cast a little bit, but at the same time move towards a a kind of happy ending because they have to like wrap up the the series for good which means it can't be like this one where they they have Octavia getting stabbed and what's going on with the Oza like you can't end a, a series like that you have to have something more conclusive and, and potentially like happy or I guess the end of the the world everything blows up I don't know that seems unlikely. Why? They've blown up like three worlds already. Yeah, but that wasn't the end of the series. That was that was just to keep you asking how are they gonna keep the show going. <laughs> mm. I might have gone through everything I had in my notes here. Oh, there was that lady who lit herself on fire to try and kill Gabriel and, and Murphy after they figured out that Murphy wasn't Daniel. I guess the guy that tried to kiss him was like even though Gabriel said they'd overlook any little differences if like they just fed them the narrative they would believe they just didn't like I guess for whatever reason. Gabriel was just wrong about that. But it led to a fun little fight scene. Like, they got to, what, beat up 30 people who have no combat experience? <laughs> Seemed easy for them. I honestly wasn't surprised when they, they were successful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just quickly reading through everything. Oh, Miller took the potion, so he may become a bit of a, a, a an ally to Jordan, I think, next season. That's a, I hadn't thought about that until just now, because he, he was one of the people who, who had to drink this stuff before the earth things were removed from the room. He, he'll probably have the same issues that Jordan has, if not all of them, some of them. Yeah. Is there anything that you want to add to this before we wrap this up? Um, no, I don't think so. Cool. I mean, well, the only thing I was saying, thinking earlier was like, I was getting Wizard of Oz vibes with like, I didn't think about it before, but with like the green smoke and light and then like the colors and the, um, the way Russell dresses kind of reminds me of like the man behind the door or whatever. But yeah. Anyway. <laughs> and I think like the whole sanctum and their the whole farms around sanctum kind of feels like the the scenery of what is it is it Kansas like there's just like yeah, um Kansas doesn't really look like that but sure <laughs> I don't know I'm guessing more like 
like the woods where they find the lion or whatever. Yeah, it feels okay. kind of or like the, the whimsical part of it, but it, I don't know what I'm saying anymore. It did, I guess, feel like a bit like Wizard of Oz, with at least the colors. But yeah, we'll do these reviews and discussions for next season when that comes out. I'm guessing next year. Hopefully, we don't have to wait too long for it, and we'll see you around.